your Bibles to the book of Genesis, chapter number 30. Genesis, chapter number 30. I'm going to be referencing back to this chapter uh, for the beginning as we move on, uh, referencing several things. Uh, fellowship meeting was great on Friday night, really gave me the basis of what I want to preach on. Amen. Uh, I just appreciate the presence of God in the fellowship meeting, the move of God's spirit. Next fellowship meeting is at Brother Dismores. Uh, if you'd like to go, we're going to stay in the night, so uh, I can't necessarily invite you to go with us because I ain't share my bed with you. <laughs> Uh, but you're more than welcome to attend. It's Brother Dismore's. It's just a little too much for us to work, to drive down and then drive back. Uh, then December's off and then back by the currents in January. So I'm glad you'd like to go. Genesis chapter number 30. Or ch chapter number 30. I want to look at verse number 25. And then we'll look at verse number 26. The Bible says that it came to pass... <clears throat> When Rachel had born Joseph, that Jacob said unto Laban, Send me away that I may go into my own place and to my own country, uh, and give uh, uh, me my wives and my children for whom I have served you, and let me go. For you know my service which I have done, uh, uh, done you. I want to look at that where uh, Jacob says, And it came to pass, that he said unto Laban, his father-in-law, he said, send me away that I may go unto my own place and to my own country. I want to look at this thought this morning that it's time to move on. Now, you take it for what it's worth. Amen. I'm not saying anyone needs to leave America or Bible Church. That's not the basis of my message. I want to keep you all here forever. I want to grow us and uh, bust out the walls and build bigger sanctuary. Amen. But if the, if the Lord should move you, I understand, but you would want it to be the Lord. But, but I'm looking at uh, this in several ways this morning uh, that, that it's time to move on in life. Amen. It's time to move on in life. You understand everyone will be different this morning when I preach this message. But I believe it's for each of us. Amen. As, as, as we look at the Word of God. Uh, it might be time for you to move on and leave the past behind. Uh, it may be time for you to move on, make your decision, and, and move on with that decision instead of wallowing around in that valley of decision. It's time to, to stop wandering around the mountain. Amen. And get out of the rut. Amen. Time to make your decision. Uh, uh, there's a lot of folks who, who simply have a lot of difficulty with moving on. Amen. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk uh, in our message this morning about moving on. Having the boldness to grab hold of those dreams and those visions that God has given you. And, and move on with, 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 with what God has for you. This chapter uh, really in Genesis is divided into three parts. And uh, as we look at this chapter, you'll find that Jacob, uh, he, he has two wives. He has that of Leah, which he didn't bargain for. I preached about her back in uh, uh, June, I believe it was. I looked at, at Jacob marrying Leah and Rachel. And uh, how that he married Leah might not have been what he chosen or what he wanted. A lot of things in life we make commitments to. It's not what we cho choose or what we want. Uh, but in the end, we see it's good for us. Amen. In the end of Jacob's life, it wasn't Rachel we wanted buried by him. It was Leah who he wanted. Uh, but, but let's focus this morning on that of, of Rachel and Leah and Jacob and how that Jacob, uh, he's married both of these, these sisters. And uh, as he marries them, the first part of it, we see about him having sons. 
You'll see that uh, uh, here the Bible says that, that Rachel, she saw that, uh, that Jacob uh, uh, and, and, and Leah were having children. She was envious. She wanted children. And so she calls her handmaiden in. And we find that there are sons that are born. We find that, uh, that out of Leah came four sons, Reuben, which means see a son. Simeon, which means hearing. Uh, Levi, which means joined or attached. Judah, which means Yahweh or God be praised. And then uh, we find that out of uh, 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 Biha, uh, uh, Bila, I should say, uh, the handmaid of Rachel, we find that uh, uh, there is Nethah, which means wrestling. There was a wrestling with Leah. Uh, uh, Nethah mean, meaning wrestling. And then we find that there was uh, 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 Aisher, which means happy. And, and, and then there was Issachar, which means man of fire. And then there was Zebulun, which means dwelling. And then finally, Rachel has two sons, one that we're very familiar with. His name is Joseph, which means increaser. And then there uh, was uh, uh, not only uh, Joseph, uh, but we find that, that, that she has the, that last son. Uh, and, and so we find that, that out of all the children that is being born, whether it's by Leah, whether it's by Rachel, whether it's by handmaids from these ladies, we find that there is a family that is growing. And there's much contention. There's a lot that's, that's happening there. That's, that, that, that begins the chapter. And uh, we find that uh, in the middle of family that there is some growing and there's some increase, but there's also some uh, growing pains, if you will. Do you ever notice the families, there's growing pains? If not, I, I, you must be very special <laughs> not to have growing pains in your family. Because as families grow, there are growing pains. There's things that happen. And uh, we find that, uh, that, that, that that's exactly what happens here uh, in, in the family of Jacob. Uh, there's a lot of dreams that he's wanting. Uh, not all, everything, all of our dreams necessarily turn out the way that we want them to. Hello? And if you have dreams, visions, things that you want to have happen in your life, but they don't necessarily they turn out the way that you want them to. And so uh, we come to the end of this chapter and there's those growing pains. We find that finally it gets to the place where Jacob has his family and it goes to Laban. He says, Laban, I've worked for you for many, many years. I've been here many years. I work for my wife Leah. I work for, for my wife Rachel. I, 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 I have stayed here. You have seen grandchildren being born. I work for you. But, but now I no longer want to be dependent upon you. I want to be my own man. I want to take my family. I want to branch out in independence. I, I think it's time for me to go. And so he gets his ducks in a row, so to speak, that he can leave Laban. And Brother Eli, we find that eventually he leaves Laban. And not only is he a, a millionaire in our society, but a billionaire because God blesses him. He says it's time to move on. I believe that in our life that there comes a point and a time in our life where it's time to move on with things spiritually. Amen. We, we can't be relying upon someone else all the time. Riding on someone else's coattail or looking for someone else to provide the way. But God says, I've created you for a purpose. And don't lose out with me with this word because I, I, I know some folks don't like it. Uh, but, 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 but there's a destiny. There's a plan. There's an end result. There's a place where God wants to take you to. And that's simply why I'm using the word destiny. Amen. And and so we have to get to the place where we know that, that, that life don't always go the way that we want. Amen. But when God gives us dreams and visions and God has a plan for our life, we've got to get ourselves out of the rut. Stop wandering around about the mountain time and time again. And it's time to move on. One person said it this way, that a rut is nothing more than this, that it's a grave with, with open ends. Sometimes we get ourselves stuck in a rut that we are never who, who we want to be. 
who God's purpose for us to be, not who God has given us dreams of being and visions of dream being, but we get stuck in a rut somewhere and there we die, never becoming and grabbing hold of what God has for us. Mm -hmm. You know, people listen to self-helps all the time. And I'm not that some things can be good, amen. Uh, but I believe the greatest self help is knowing that God has a plan for our life, and when He speaks into our life and He guides us through His Word and through His Spirit, that we need to become who God wants us to become the man or woman that God wants us to be, amen. Don't fall in the rut, don't fall in the grave, and so here it is. That, that, that Jacob comes to the realization that, that I'm not going to be able to achieve all my dreams and everything that I want to be if I continue to stay here. I've been through some rough times and some difficult times, and, 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 I, and I want to stay here. Let's look at this a little closely. We look and we see in verse number one, the Bible says, And Rachel saw that uh, she bore Jacob no children. And Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel. And he said, Am I God? And in God's stead, Who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? All of a sudden we find here that that Rachel was frustrated, she's angry, she's mad, she looks, Leah's having children, she's not able to have children, and so she goes to Jacob and she says, Jacob, oh, ah, what's going on? I'm not having children. And so Jacob says, okay, I'm shifting it. You're mad at me, but I'm shifting it to God. Am I God? Give your questions to God. That you're envious of your sister, uh, give your questions to God. Get your envy taken to God. And so we see that his family is growing. Children are being born from his wife, Leah. And as the family is growing, that there's some jealousy and there's some problems that's occurring. Hey, anybody? Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. But let me ask you. Any of you ever have that in your family where there's some jealousy? Where there's some envy? Maybe you experience that yourself. There's some jealousy and there's some envy. Amen. I want you to know that jealousy and envy can destroy relationships. And so here it is that the family is about to be destroyed right here because Rachel is very jealous of Leah. Is it Leah's fault? No, it's not Leah's fault. Uh, she, she's married to Jacob as well. This is the way it was in this day and age and, and the custom of the culture. And, and she's having children. And, and, and so she's very jealous and she's very envious of what's happening here. And, and, and so uh, envy and jealousy, they're very close in meaning. Envy is not of, of wanting, uh, uh, longing uh, to, to possess something that someone else has, uh, has or has, has achieved. And then jealousy comes to the place where you threaten them because you want it. And so if you find a little bit of envy in your heart towards someone, uh, really, it is the time to take care of it right then and there before that bud blossoms into full-fledged jealousy. And you do whatever you can do to have what that person has and has worked hard to achieve. Amen. Once again, I want to tell you that we need to come to a place in God where we understand that God has created us and fashioned us in His image and what He has given us and what we have worked for. Be grateful for what God has given. Amen. Allow someone else to be who God has made them to be, but learn to love yourself for who God has made you to be because no one else can be you. And if you're stuck in a rut, it's no one else's fault but you this morning. Amen. I know that hurts. I'm preaching to myself. I've been stuck in a rut before. Amen. But if I don't develop and I don't become who God wants me to be, it's because I've been wandering around the mountain. It's because I've been living off a lane, but I never want to get out and live on my own. So here it is that jealousy begins to occur. 
The story is told of two shopkeepers, and they were across the road from one another, Brother Craig, and they would watch every day. They were envious. If one got a customer, they'd want to get another customer. They were constantly keeping track of one another and wanting to outdo one another. One night, one of the, uh, the, the, the shopkeepers had a dream, and in the dream, Brother Eli, an angel came to him and said, I, I've come to tell you that you can ask, and I will give whatever your petition is. But know that the guy across the street from you, who you are so contentious and envious of and jealous of, whatever you get, he will get double up. So if he gets, you ask for a million dollars, he's going to be a billionaire. If you ask for a long life and good health, he is going to have extreme good health and live longer than you. So whatever you petition, I will give. He thought, he thought, he thought. He said, you know what I want? I want to be blind in one eye. If we're not careful, our life can become so envious and jealous of other people. And let me tell you, Rachel, you got to watch what's happening. You're very jealous of Leah. You're very jealous of what God has blessed Leah with. But God has created you to be Rachel. So be Rachel. The Word of God says, in the book of James. James chapter number 3, verse number 16. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil war. Where there is envy and where there is strife, there is confusion. I serve a God who is not a God of confusion, but a God of order. Amen. Understanding that we have to love God and we have to love the life that God has called us to. Amen. And there may be things in our families, amen, but we've got to work them out. If there is constant uh, envy and bickering and jealousy and contention, it will destroy. Amen. God help us. Amen. We've got to take care of it before it spreads throughout the entire family. And we've got to take care of it before it spreads throughout the family of the church. Even Miracle Revival Church. Amen. God has called everyone to their position. God has called everyone to be who God wants them to be. Amen. If someone can sing better than you, praise God. If God's not called you to sing, then do what God's called you to do. Amen. If God's not called you to, uh, to, to be a public speaker, then come, do what God has called you to do. It's learning to find out what God has for you. Amen. And I believe the best way that we can take care of this problem is praying blessings upon others. God God, would you bless them? God, would you increase them? Amen. And as we begin to be thankful and pray for others, our situation will change. Mm -hmm. Proverbs chapter number 14, verse number 30 says, A sound heart is life to the body, but envy is rottenness to the bone. What is a sound heart? It's when our heart is right with God. Amen. We love others and we appreciate others. Amen. And we can be right before God and we can be right before others. Amen. The Word of God says in Hebrews chapter number 10, in verse number 24, we love reading that verse number 25 where we talk about not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Amen. But the Word of God goes on down to say, not forsaking the assemblies of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and, the, and so much more as you see the day approaching. And the Word of God says prior to that, let us consider one another to provoke one another to love and to good works. The problem with Rachel was she was so jealous of Leah, she never learned how to be thankful for what they had. And so it seems kind of crazy to us, but in their culture, they were able to take their handmaids and they were able to bring them in and say, hey, I can't have a child. Would you, would you have a child for me? And it became very acceptable in their culture and the child of their handmaid became their child. So that's what Rachel did. We find that eventually that God looked down 
and he blessed Rachel with children. <coughs> it's interesting that he blesses her with Joseph, and his name means increase. You see, when we allow God to do it, God will bring the increase. The problem before, Brother Eli, was this, was Rachel was trying to mix faith and her work together. You ever try to store oil and water together? Does it work? Trying to blend it together and make it happen? It will never work. That oil is separated from water. You can shake it, but it will still separate. In our life, if we're not careful, we can say, well, I'm going to do it my way, but I'll have a little faith in God. God might need my help. God doesn't need your help to bring victory and purpose and contentment in your life. God needs you to put it all in His hands and allow Him to work it out. Amen. When God got in the middle of it, amen, He brought increase. I'm not here preaching blab it and grab it. And I'm not here preaching that God's going to make everyone here a millionaire. I believe this this morning. That even if you live on the budget that you're on this morning or even less, God can make you feel so contented because He's the one that's done it. And He's the one that's provided. And so here it is that Rachel has, has children. Amen. And when we find that, 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 that she grabs hold of them and she loves them. And all of a sudden her husband says, listen, I have my past mistakes and my failures. Things that we've done in the flesh. The things that we've tried to work on our own. And we drag them along with us. But I'm not going to stay here. Amen. And waller myself down in this. He says, but I'm going to get up and I'm going to move on. Let me say something this morning. And I don't want you to lose out with me. Amen. I'll explain myself in just a few moments. Amen. But I want you to know that life is constantly evolving. That doesn't mean I believe in evolution. But life is constantly evolving. Amen. If you don't believe me, uh, uh, grab your old yearbook from when you were in school and see if you look the same. Right? Amen. Life is constantly evolving. Grab your check registry from 25 years ago and see if life hasn't evolved some. Amen. Uh, some of you may walk through your house and, and, and where bedrooms are what's filled with laughter and crying and, and all kinds of things. Now it's quiet. You know what? Because life is evolving. Amen. Life is happening. Uh, some of you look at, and, and boy, I looked at my girls while we were away. They turned three. I'm not sure how that happened. I sure love them. And, and, and if any of you are on Facebook, it'll bring up pictures from a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. And so I was looking at brought a picture on my Facebook from three years ago, Brother Dennis, where Brindley was laying on that NICU with a tube up her nose. And, and uh, don't even try to put a tube up her nose now. <laughs> because life is evolving. It, is, it doesn't mean that we believe in evolution. It means this. It means that we serve a God who is on the move. God is not stagnant. God is not in a rut. God is not standing still. But God is working. He has a purpose. He has a plan. He has a vision. He has good things in mind toward the end. Amen. Uh, he is constantly moving and working. And so here it is. Jacob said, I realize that life is evolving. I came here single. Now I have two wives. I have some baggage of doing things in the flesh and trying to mingle uh, some faith in it. Uh, but, but, but I also, I have some victories where God has really worked in my life when I trusted Him. And He says, I'm going to get up and I'm going to move on. Amen. I want to tell you something. If you are constantly dwelling on all the negatives in your life, all the things that's went wrong, sins that you've done and you've committed, and you hold yourself in captivity for those things, it's time that you free yourself and you move on. My, my, my. God has moved on. I'm not saying we harbor sin. I'm not saying we harbor envy. I'm not saying we harbor jealousy. I'm not saying that if sin is unrepentant, of, we roll it under the carpet, we move on. I'm saying we repent of sin. We make right the condition of our heart that is not sound. Amen. And we get a sound heart before God. Amen. Where we're not envying, where we're not jealous. And we say, God, I'm picking up and I'm moving on from here because I want to be the man or woman that you want me to be. Let me tell you something. How many of you 
are born with, you can't do that. Come to my house. Come to my house. There's climbing on the countertops. There's climbing in and out of the cribs. There's playing in the toilet. There's painting your face with yogurt. You know? Because no one told them they can't do that until they heard it from mommy and daddy. Now there's some do nots that are very important in our life. Because Sister Beverly, if you come in here and you start eating and your yogurt and smearing it all over your face, I'm going to say, wow. <laughs> She wouldn't do that. She wouldn't do that. But I want to tell you something. Some of us have learned you can't do that so much in the things spiritually and in the goals and the plans that God has given you that you bought into the lie that you can't do that. You weren't born with that. Someone has told you that. Amen. Someone has told you you can't be free of the Spirit. Someone has told you that you can't live a life of victory. Someone has told you that you can't possess the good things that God has for you. Amen. And somewhere in the middle of it, you bought into the lie. Amen. It's time to set yourself free, you, Jacob. Amen. That you don't have to live off a lane, but it's time to set yourself free, Jacob. That, that yes, you failed and, and you did things in the flesh and you were with handmaids. Amen. Uh, but I want to tell you something, Jacob. It's time to set yourself free because God has good things for you. Let me go back to my own country. Let me take my family. I want to grow. I want to blossom. I want to become the man God wants me to be. He didn't listen to his past failures. He didn't listen to the contentment of years past by. But he said, it's time, Laban, that I get my ducks in a row and I move on to be who I need to be. Listen, there are some of you that sit in this seat. Some of you think that you can never be filled with the Holy Ghost with speaking in other tongues. That's a lie from the devil. God wants to fill every one of us believers with the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in other tongues. Let me jump back a little bit. There's some of you that sit here wondering right now if you would die, if you would go to heaven. Amen. It's time that you get over sin, you get it beneath the blood, and you put the past behind you, and by the grace of God, you move forward to be the man and the woman that God wants you to be. Amen. Amen. Let me be a little, this may sound harsh, But you know, when Grandpa died, Grandma was struggling. How long do I go on? 61 years. I'll tell a little tale on Grandma that she let out out of the bag that she never told us before. I asked my wife that didn't know this. But she was outside sweeping the porch when Grandpa came by, and he won her heart. Brother Walt, six weeks later, they were married. Wow. <laughs> I don't feel so bad. <laughs> Seven months is a long time compared to six weeks. <laughs> but Grandma said, I don't know how I'm going to go on. Now, Grandma's not ready to hear this right now. Hopefully, she won't watch this video. But one day, she's going to have to go on. All of us have lost someone in life that we love. It's time to get away from the grave and move on. Some of us have experienced the victories of God so powerful in the past that we live off of them. Folks say to me, oh, when Brother Clay was here, I remember. You know, Brother Clay's been gone a long time. And if you're living off of Brother Clay's, and thank God for Brother Clay's, and thank God for what happened. I'm not denying it. That's wonderful. But if we live on that, then Jacob, you're in a rut. And you're going to die there. You're going to live on the coattail of Laban all your life. You're never going to experience the wealth and the prosperity that God has for you. Once again, wealth and prosperity is not what you have in your bank account. I'm talking about the prosperity of stepping out and moving beyond so that we live our life with such a purpose that we've done it 
by the grace of God. Now hold on, I'm not done. Some of you have not forgiven others over something that's happened months, years, decades ago for the sake of your soul. It's time to move on. When we are at church, I know what time it is. I'm, I'm rushing a hurry. I've been here for two weeks. <laughs> I was talking to a man I never met before. And as I was talking to him, he said this to me. He said, when I was 12 years old, he said, my dad walked out. 